The purpose of this video is to provide a demonstration of how to adjust your ski bindings when you get new boots. The reason I'm making this video is because I wasn't able to find a complete soup to nuts tutorial online. I had to do a lot of searching to find all the bits and pieces that I'm going to show you today. Before we get into it, I want to explain I am not a ski technician. I'm not a professional. I'm just a guy that has a reason to be doing this at home. Um, I'll talk about that in a second, but if you have equipment that you can take to your local ski shop and have them make these adjustments, you should definitely do that. Uh, your ski bindings need to be adjusted properly in order to be safe, and your local shop is going to have the necessary experience and equipment to do this properly. You might not be able to have those same results doing it at home. So if you can take your equipment to your local ski shop, do that. Uh, if you can't, which is my case, uh, then this video is for you. The reason that I can't take my equipment to my local ski shop is because uh, my bindings are no longer supported by the manufacturer. I was at the shop last weekend buying a new pair of ski boots. I purchased the boots. I left the store. I was probably half a mile down the road when I got a phone call uh, from somebody there explaining that they couldn't even adjust the length of my bindings to fit the new boots because the bindings were no longer supported by the manufacturer. Uh, these are Atomic Supercross 7s. They are probably close to 8 years old at this point. I bought them when I was in college. I was looking for a good deal. I didn't know any better. And unfortunately, these skis have bindings that are permanently attached to the ski. Um, this is not a case of just buying a new set of bindings, you know, taking the old set off the skis, putting the new set on, and then I'm good to go. Um, these skis at this point basically can't be supported by any shop. And I'm not in a position right now to buy a whole new set of skis. So I wanted to learn how to do these adjustments on my own so that I could get another season or two out of this pair of skis here. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video today. Okay, before we actually begin working on the bindings, I want to take you on a quick tour so that when I put the camera back on the tripod, uh, you understand what I'm talking about. The binding right now has the heel piece raised up as if a boot were in it, and this is only so that I can show you the DIN scale at the back of the binding. So let's start at the front and we'll work our way backwards. So this is the front piece of the binding. As you can see, there are two adjustment screws. There's one at the front and there's one on the top. Uh, let's start with the one on the front. The one on the front, you can see it there, uh, is the DIN adjustment for the front part of the binding. DIN is a German standard um, that the world has kind of adopted for how much tension it takes for your foot to come out of the binding when you fall. And if you can see, there's a scale on the front of the binding, uh, typically 4 to 12, and that is basically, that's what needs to be set uh, in order for you to pop out of your binding at the right moment without being injured. The number that you should set it to is based on your height, your weight, your age, your skier type, whether you're a beginner, you know, novice, um, fairly advanced skier, whatever your type is. Uh, and it also factors in the sole length of your boot, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, you adjust it simply by turning the screw at the front of the ski. Um, so that's the front DIN setting. The screw on top of the ski here, you can see, uh, that basically, if I come down here for a second, that basically is going to adjust the height of this part of the um, binding. From what I read online, a lot of the newer bindings have this sort of automatically done, but in this case it's manual and that's what the screw um, up here on the top does. So this is just moves this up and down. All right, the middle is probably the most important part for when you get new boots. Um, as you can see, it's basically the front half of the binding um, over here on the left and the back half of the binding over here on the right with a screw in the middle and these two sort of sliding scales, as you can see. Um, the scales have numbers on them. These numbers correspond to the uh, sole length of your boot, which again, I'll show you that in a second. To adjust these, you basically, in, this, in the case of these bindings, you basically undo this screw and slide these two halves, um, you know, forward and backwards. Um, you know, some skis I, that I saw online had sort of a quick release style where you could just push a button and slide them. In this case, you've got to use a uh, screw. And if I kind of come in, we'll see if we can focus. You can see that there's numbers on the scale, um, you know, 2.7 all the way up to 3.6. They, again, they correspond to the sole length of your boot, and they are in 10 millimeter increments. So 2.7 corresponds to a sole length of 270 millimeters and so on. Um, the other thing, and I don't know if the camera will let me focus this close. Yeah, no, it won't. But in the case of these atomic bindings, um, 
all the screws here are posi screws. So, you know, if you've got a pot, you can use a Phillips, a big Phillips screwdriver, but if you've got a posi screw, uh, screwdriver, you should probably use that instead. Okay, so that's the middle section. Um, and then this is basically the rear section. And you can see uh, we've got another DIN scale, and there are two screws on this rear section. I'll come down here to show them to you. Um, so this screw here, that is the uh, DIN setting adjustment. And just like the front, you basically twist this back and forth to adjust the scale where it needs to be. And then this screw down here is your forward pressure adjustment. Uh, and that basically controls um, how much forward pressure is on the boot. And it again, it is, you know, needs to be properly set in order for it to be safe. So those are the screws that you're going to see me working with today when I put the camera back on the tripod. Uh, and, and we'll go through making the adjustments. You heard me talking before about your boot sole length. Um, this is critical to getting your bindings set up properly so that they'll fit your boots. Obviously people with different size feet are going to have different uh, boot sole lengths. Uh, the boot sole length is always printed in millimeters on the shell of your boot. It is not the same thing as the size of your boot. In my case these are size 26.5. Um, which does correspond to 265 millimeters, but that's kind of like the inside measurement of the boot. The actual length of the sole, as you can see, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see it on the right-hand side, um, in my case, is 305 millimeters. And you need to know that in order to get your bindings set up properly. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is adjust the uh, length of the binding to fit the boot. So we know from before that the boot is 305 millimeters, uh, so we need to make those adjustments. In order to do that, in the case of these bindings, come in here with my posi screwdriver, basically undo this screw here, get it nice and loose, um, and then we essentially slide these bindings uh, back and forth. If you remember from the last part of the video, uh, there's a scale on here. Um, the scale is in 10 millimeter increments, so basically what I'm looking for is 30.5. Um, so I'm going to come in here, essentially slide this one out, um, to 30.5, and then I'm going to slide this front one back to 30.5. Um, let's see. Okay. And they should clip into place. There, there are teeth in between that kind of mesh, um, so they should clip into place. And once that's done, I'm basically tighten this screw back down. Okay, the next thing we need to do is adjust the front uh, DIN setting and toe cup height. So to do that, again, posi screwdriver, I'm going to come in here, uh, look at the scale, and basically twist this up as necessary or down uh, as necessary. In my case, mine were set right from before, so I'm going to set them back at my DIN setting, which is 6.5. Um, which is right about there. Uh, and in my case, I know already that the toe cup height setting is fine. Um, but to adjust that, you simply, you know, twist the screw to move it up or down. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so to adjust the back part of the binding, you are going to need the boot for this part. So you can see I've got the boot on the table. Um, the first thing that we want to do, if you remember from the last part of the video, there are two screws back here. So we've got a DIN adjustment screw, just like on the front, and then we've got a forward pressure uh, adjustment screw. The first thing we want to do is adjust the forward pressure. And so this is the part that we need the boot for. So basically take your boot, put it in the binding, make sure it's you know properly seated in the toe cup, and then rest the heel there, just like that. And now what you're going to do is you're going to come and adjust the forward pressure adjustment screw. And you'll see that when I twist this screw, I'm going to go backwards at first. Um, the binding, the rear part of the binding is going to move backwards. Um, and eventually when you, know, you twist it to the point where you can't twist it anymore, okay, uh, it's all the way out now. And what you want to do at this point is basically push the boot forward so that the, the front is in the toe cup properly. And now what you want to do is start to screw this the other direction, start to kind of close, move it forward, close things back up again. So you're going to twist, and at first it's going to move nice and easily, and it's going to start to grab the, the boot. And you're going to reach a point where you can see twisting it forward doesn't cause the binding to move at all. Okay, so I'm going to back this up again to do it over. So now it's moving backwards. I'm going to push it, the boot into the front of the, the toe cup, basically screw this forward, 
and I'm at that point now where the binding is no longer moving as I twist the screw. Um, that's the first step. And now what we want to do is put the binding into the boot like you were skiing. So just come up to the top, push it in. Okay. Um, now you can see that DIN setting that I showed you from before. Um, and what you want to do now, uh, in the case of atomic bindings at least, is adjust this forward pressure screw so that it's flush with the back of this plastic housing. All the bindings are different. I think I heard that, that marker needs to be kind of a little bit bumped out. Um, so you need to figure out you know, what it should be set to for your bindings. But in the case of these atomics, it should be set flush. And so what I'm going to do is just, it's probably just two clicks. Um, there you go. And now it's nice and flush with the back of this plastic housing here. And because there's a spring involved in this, you want to repeat it to make sure that you know, any kind of anomalies are sort of worked out. So I'm going to push this out of the boot, or out of the binding, I should say, um, and then basically just reseat it and make sure that this is flush, which it is. So we're good. Okay. And then the last thing that you need to do uh, at the back of the ski here is adjust the DIN setting, just like you did for the front of the ski by twisting the screw. Uh, in my case, uh, my setting is fine, but this is where you'd make the adjustment. The other thing that I want to point out regarding these DIN settings is this is a mathematical formula. There's not a lot of guesswork in this. It's not kind of, you know, the shop tech's personal experience. Um, it's math. And if you go online, you can do a Google search for a DIN calculator, and it will ask you, like I mentioned before, your height, your weight, your age, your skier type, and the sole length of your boot. Um, and with all that information, it'll give you a DIN setting. So mine is 6.5. Yours will be different depending on, you know, how you are. Um, and that's where you come up with this number. Okay, uh, we've now got a properly adjusted binding setup. Uh, to go through it one more time, uh, we made adjustments to the length based on the sole length of our boot. Uh, we then adjusted the front DIN setting. Uh, there's a toe cup height adjustment. And then at the back of the ski back here, we adjusted the forward pressure and the back DIN setting. So front and rear DIN settings, forward pressure, toe cup height, and length. And now we've got a properly adjusted um, binding boot combination. And you basically just repeat this process on the other ski. So thanks for watching.